It was very interesting to hear the results of the monarchy and Penelope studies presented at the San Antonio meeting. Obviously, there are significant differences across all the three adjuvant trials we have, if you include the palace study. So when you look across the trials, um, the first thing you notice is that, of course, the uh, Monarch E study, which is so, to date the only positive study, used a different CDK inhibitor, a bevacyclob, compared to the other two, Palace and Penelope, that used palbocyclob. The criteria for um, entering the trials was also quite different. So um, both Palace and the Monarch E study used um, an anatomic stage. So patients with high stage cancers were eligible um, for entry to the study, as well as on Monarch E, as we saw at San Antonio, also patients with tumors that had high expression of CHI-67. In contrast, the Penelope B study um, enrolled patients, all of whom had received preoperative chemotherapy and had um, residual disease following chemotherapy, um, and uh, then basically used this CPSEG uh, prognostic indicator to kind of select patients at high risk of relapse. Both Palace and Monarch E used two years of the CDK inhibitor, while Penelope B only used a year. Um, but I think the most crucial difference between the studies is the follow-up. So um, Penelope B has the longest follow-up um, compared to, it's got nearly double the follow-up of, of Monarch E at this time point. Um, the other key differences, uh, just thinking about the results, are the adherence uh, to the different um, to the to the CDK inhibitor arm, in that the PALA study had about a 50-fold higher um, discontinuation rate than um, certainly the Penelope study, and, and it was also higher than the Monarchy study. So obviously that's important because if you don't take the drug, you're not going to see any benefit from it. So I think there are the key differences between the uh, the three studies. Um, I, I think the the real key one to point out, though, is the follow-up. And the reason I say that is that if you look at the Penelope B results, at two years, there was an indeed a, a pretty meaningful um, improved invasive disease-free survival in favor of palbocyclob, which was in the, over 4%. Um, at three years, it was about 3.5%. And then at four years, as we saw at San Antonio, the curves had completely come together. Um, so when you look at the Monarch E study, what you see is that the absolute difference in uh, invasive disease-free survival was a little bit higher when they presented at ESMO compared to what was presented at San Antonio. Now, and I'm not saying that that dictates for sure that the curves are going to come together, but it does really mean that we certainly have to follow the the curves of Monarch E out to make sure that what we're seeing now does persist over time. So I think that that's the word of caution with this. If it does, though, um, I, I think the things that we have to think about in terms of why the trials are different is, you know, is abemacyclib really a more effective CDK inhibitor? That's certainly a possibility, although, you know, when, when you look at the first line, the first line metastatic studies, um, what you see is that um, the hazard ratios in favor of the CDK inhibitor arm are remarkably consistent across the trials, which makes it hard to kind of you know, rationalize why a bemocyclob would be, you know, so much better in the early stage setting. Um, so, you know, the other thing I think that kind of was shown at the meeting is um, if you think, if you look at Monarch E and the benefit in the patients with tumors that had high expression of CHI-67, which I think we can think about as being kind of a luminal B phenotype, the benefit of um, a bemocyclob in that group was higher than the than in the intent to treat population. So maybe more than stage, it's actually the biology of the cancer that dictates benefit from the CDK inhibitors. And the other reason maybe to think that is because when you think about Penelope B, we know that luminal A cancers are the ones that don't get pathologically complete response. So the Penelope B patient population could have been enriched for patients with luminal A cancers um, and perhaps luminal A cancers don't benefit as much from um, CDK inhi inhibitors. Again, we don't really have data to support that from, from the metastatic setting, but, but I think it's, it's nonetheless intriguing. Um, so I think the other big question is, you know, um, provided, you know, the results hold up and, and this is a consistent, you know, we have to think about which patients really require CDK inhibitors in the early stage setting, um, given the fact that there is some toxicity associated with them. And we, we don't honestly know the long-term toxicities yet for patients with curable disease. Um, and also, of course, you know, there's a cost involved as well, a financial cost.
so obviously uh, ribocyclob is recruiting patients in a similar risk to um, PANAS and MARV approximately. Um, the difference, of course, is that they're giving three years of ribocyclob. And I think that's important because, you know, maybe Penelope B might have been positive of four years if they'd given longer duration of CDK inhibitor. That's certainly a possibility. And the fact that ribocyclob is given three years versus two years actually might shed some light on that. And perhaps more importantly, the three years might have a, a, a larger benefit on later recurrences um, than just giving for two years. So I think the Natalie study is going to be very interesting. Um, you know, obviously ribocyclob is a little bit more similar to palbocyclob than obemocyclob. And, and again, of course, in, in the metastatic setting, the hazard ratios for PFS at least are very similar across the three CDK inhibitors, though ribocyclob does have uh, overall survival data in the first line setting. Um, so, you know, I think it'll be interesting um, because I think the, if it is a positive trial, the questions will be, well, is it the ribocyclob or is it the three years that's making the difference? Uh, in those patients. So, I, you know, again, I, I think that probably will report out within the next 12 months or so, um, maybe 18 months, but, but I think it's going to be very important.